<laughs> hey guys, hope everybody's doing well today. And I picked up today just one thing, and, and well, actually I picked up two things, but we'll get to that other one in another video. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple things here that came in the mail, and the one thing that I stopped and got, which is a big thing, but I'll show that in another video. Um, this one came in the mail, I got it for cheap, like seven bucks or something. It's a flipper disc, but... It's uh, Turner Classic Movies Greatest Classic Films Collection, uh, presented by Warner Brother Video. And this has got uh, two versions of this, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Let me see here. Do I have two versions of this one? No. Uh, this is just the one version. Just the one version. All right, so you got four movies here. Uh, the one I was worried about or thinking about was uh, Chuckle and Hyde. I wasn't sure. This has got the... Uh, overacted uh, Spencer Tracy version. But it's Spencer Tracy. It'll be good. But it's not as good as the earlier version. Uh, Freaks. That's Todd Browning's uh, classic. Todd Browning of the 1931 Dracula fame. But I think, you know, I don't know. I think he might be more famous for Freaks than he is for Dracula. It's hard to say. Uh, the Haunting, which is a 1960-ish, uh, 60-something-ish, uh, 63, uh, Robert Wise directed this first screen version of Shirley Jackson's The Haunting of Hill House. It stars Julie Harris, Claire Bloom, uh, Richard Johnson, and Russ Tamblin. <clears throat> and it's uh, obviously about a haunted house. And uh, it should be really good. Uh, and then House of Wax, which is really why I bought this thing. Uh, this is a performance that uh, made Vincent Price really master of the macabre. Vincent Price plays a uh, wax sculptor plunged into madness when an arsonist destroys his life's work. Unable to use his flame-charred hands, he uh, devises a murderous scheme to restock his museum. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Uh, Charles Bronson co-stars in this one, by the way. But uh, House of Wax, yeah, really good stuff. I remember seeing the, uh, the, it wasn't really a 3D version, but the beginning of it shows a guy with one of those balls, the rubber balls on the paddle, the paddle balls. Uh, I just remember seeing that coming at the camera when I was a kid. It was really neat. And um, yeah, it's a 3D effect right there, isn't it? Anyway, uh, not a very good one. But uh, House of Wax, Haunting, Freaks, and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Freaks is interesting. I didn't really talk about that much other than it's Todd Browning. But um, it's a scheme... A woman has a scheme to marry one of the sideshow performers um, and make off with his fortune. And it, it actually stars real-world freaks. And it's really a politically incorrect term to use these days. And I was saying to, uh, <clears throat> um, yeah, Roger, John Channel Downstar, he, made, he watched this movie. Uh, and this part of why I bought this, having watched his review. I forgot about that movie. It's been a while since I saw it. Uh, 1932 movie. It uh, it was banned when it first came out, I think. And there's still a version that I don't think ever got released. I think it was it was edited, and I think that it was lost. But uh, freaks. It, in, I remember a day when I was a kid when you'd go to like I go to the New York State Fair every year uh, when I lived in Syracuse, and every year you know we'd go to the sideshow, and the sideshow would have all these. It was the freak show, was what it was called. I think it was the Barnum and Bailey's sideshow, but every you know the kids all called it the freak show, and we we didn't mean any disrespect. That's just the term we had. We didn't know any better term. There was no politically incorrectness back then, I don't think, because we just didn't know any better. Um, we didn't mean any harm by it, but it, it was what it was. And I remember there was a guy who would take nails and you know, drive it up his nose and into his skull, and sure looked real. He was like the master of ceremonies. Plus, he had. I think he had a. I think he must have had cancer of the larynx or something because he had something here. He talked through this thing when he talked, so it was kind of it kind of freaked people out. <coughs> and then uh, <coughs> it was a bad thought. Um, he had the woman with no legs, who would be on like this platform with wheels, and she'd come out with her hands, you know, doing one of these things to bring herself. I was really kind of sad when you think about it. But as a kid, as like a nine-year-old kid, it was like, wow, what is this? You know, oh my god, and it was kind of scary in a way. And even though they're real people, you know, you don't really view them as real people when you're nine and you're paying uh, $2 to go in and see them. Um, I think that's about what it was back then. Or maybe it was a dollar. I don't remember. 
just remember my parents handed me a dollar tonight, me going in with my brother. It was kind of, it was kind of spooky. Anyway, so Freaks is on here, and The Haunting, which I've never seen, and then Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Everybody knows Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, uh, Robert Louis Stevenson's tale of a scientist who creates kind of an alter ego of himself using a potion that he, that he creates to kind of turn, uh, kind of tune into man's, uh, more manly side, more feral side, more, more hunter, you know, hunter gatherer side, I guess, whatever you want to call it. He's kind of mild mannered initially, and then he becomes obviously something much more than that. And I said, uh, Spencer Tracy's performance in this, as I recall, was kind of a little over the top, both as Jekyll and Hyde, but uh, it works. You know, it works, and it's Spencer Tracy, for goodness sakes. How can you go too far wrong with him? Anyway, I picked it up for like $7, and I like it. It's got a kind of a glow to it or something, or like a, I don't know, a sheen to it. Now, these movies are, I think, all black and white, if I'm not mistaken. I'm hoping they didn't colorize these. It doesn't say on here that they're in color, so I'm hoping they're not. I'm hoping they're all in black and white. I don't have anything on here that tells me that, but I know Turner Classic Movies is, is infamous about turning perfectly good black and white movies into color movies for some reason. I don't know what the attraction is there. I have no interest in seeing any of these in color. Hopefully they're not. No, I don't think so. It looks like it's all going to be in uh, original black and white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Uh, flipper disc, so there's no really good reason to show you that. But oh, there's a bunch of... There is a bunch of uh, stuff out here. There's... there's um, Looks like there's some extras on some of this stuff. Theatrical trailer, at least. Maybe went not much more than that, I suppose. Oh, on the Freaks one, there's a documentary. Freaks Sideshow Cinema. A special me special, me special message prologue added for theatrical release. It was kind of cool. Yeah. And there's a commentary on the House of Wax. No, on The Haunting. By Julie Harris and others. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. So that's kind of cool. Anyway, that is those four that I picked up. And thank you, Shop Factory. Um, I got magnets with my uh, one, of my one of my purchases from Shop Factory during uh, Shocktober. But the uh, they they came in like this, just this floppy envelope, and they had taken the magnets and literally folded them over. And put them in to fit. Well, they got, I don't know what happened. They, the post office crunched them up and a couple of magnets actually had creases in them. And one of them was actually ripped. The crease was so deep that it actually tore the magnet. Um, and I just wrote them and said, hey, you know, this is not cool. I mean, I know they're free and I'm not complaining necessarily because it's free. And some of them are still good. But like two of the magnets are creased and one is ripped. And, you know, it's not cool. Um, and they just sent me another one. Obviously, they sent it free and they flat uh, flat mail them. I'm assuming it's the same magnets. I guess it's only the one kind. But thank you Shout Factory. That was really nice of you. Classy move. You didn't have to look. They wrote do not bend. Do not bend. Do not bend on it. So they, they were certainly aware of my predicament. And this is a flat mailer. Cardboard flat mailer. Looks perfect. I haven't opened it yet but it looks like it's going to be very nice. Why wouldn't it be? And then I'm really excited. I, I can't believe I'm just sitting here not opening this the box I got. I got a huge box today. I'm going to open that in another video, but I'm really excited about it. But um, it's big. But I got a really good deal on it. So I was happy to pick it up. Um, one of my favorite television shows of all time, uh, really. It, and it's to this day I can watch this show and, and really... It's kind of like Friends or for me or All the Family or MASH or... The West Wing. There's a handful of stuff that I can watch almost any time and enjoy, and this is one of them. So, um, it's more China Beach than the rest, or MASH, than the rest of what I mentioned. It's not a comedy. It's a drama. Um, not one of these ones that hit a laugh track with it or a live audience, though. This was this was shot to film, uh, but a really good television show, so stay tuned for that one, if that sounds at all interesting. But, um, I'm really excited about it. Uh, it. It's it's one of the more exciting things. I've, one of the things I've been more excited about than some. I was really torn on purchasing it. Not not that I didn't want to purchase it, but you know, it's getting closer to Christmas and so on and so forth. I just got a really good deal. So I'm going to sell some stuff on eBay to kind of make up for it. I made some room on my shelf up here for it. 
one of these shelves over here. I guess someplace I'm going to put it, but you'll see it soon if you if you stay tuned. And I hope you will. Like I guess hope you enjoyed this little unboxing. There wasn't much to it, but four good movies, uh, turn of classic movies. Can't go wrong with them. And for less than ten dollars for four uh, from Amazon, you really can't beat it. Happy for the DVD. I mean, obviously you love Blu-ray, but happy to pick up stuff on DVD from time to time when I get that kind of a good price. All right, guys. Take care.